Okay, we are working on Guided Class Practice 108A today. We'll do this front side together, and then I'm going to expect that you do side 108B on your own. As a reminder, I am always here for any questions you have. So beyond this video, if you have questions on the back side on 108B, something you just don't understand, I need you to be in touch with me. Let me know what you have questions on. I will ask that you complete as much as you can on your own and let me know what areas you're really confused on so we can get through those in one chat, either on the phone or Zoom or FaceTime. We'll be flexible and we'll figure it out, okay? All right, let's get started. Number one, Alicia, Barry, Fred, and Janet will share 24 crackers. Draw a napkin for each child. Draw a picture that shows the crackers on each child's napkin. How many crackers will each child receive? Okay, so it's telling us to do some work here. Okay, so it wants us to draw a napkin for each child. Draw a picture to show the crackers on each child's napkin. And then our answer is going to say how many crackers will each child receive? We're going to circle that crackers. That's going to tell us we need to have an answer that answers in crackers, okay? All right, so I have names, but I need a number, okay? Oh, 24. They're going to share 24 crackers. But how can I make this into a number? Well, I can count how many kids there are, right? So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to draw how many napkins? I'm going to draw four because that was the first thing they told me to do, was draw a napkin for each child. So I'm going to draw four napkins. There are four children. The next thing it tells me to do is draw a picture to show the crackers on each child's napkin. I have 24 crackers that I'm going to divide equally. So I'm going to draw that picture, and I'm going to count as I do it. So one, two three, four. I'm going to go through and I'm going to draw one on each um, each napkin until I'm at that 24 mark. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so there are their napkins. So let's double check. Did I draw a napkin for each child? Yep. Did I draw a picture to show the crackers on each child's napkin? Sure did. How many crackers will each child receive? How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So now let's draw our number sentence. We had 24 crackers. I'm just going to write that number 24. I'm going to divide it into, how many did we divide it into? Four, because it's between four children. And how many did each child get? Six. It's asking me about crackers, so my answer needs to be in crackers answer. I'll repeat it down here. Six crackers. Okay. What is a reasonable estimate for the weight of a small dog? Okay. I am going to reference a few things, okay? So one pound is going to usually be excuse me, um, usually you could get like a pound of potatoes, a pound of sugar. Um, 10 pounds is usually, um, well, um, Holly is um, seven pounds, so I'll use that as a reference. 80 pounds, that would probably be around what some of you guys weigh, maybe 80. Um, I know Dawson weighs 56 pounds, so as some reference. And 150 pounds would probably be the size of um, an adult. 
okay? So if we're thinking of the weight of a small dog, which of these do you think is a good estimate? I think one pound would be too small. I think 150 pounds would be too big. That is not a small dog, okay? Remember, it says small. There might be a dog that is 150 pounds, but that is not a small dog. I would say a dog that's 80 pounds, also not a small dog. 10 pounds would be a reasonable estimate for a small dog. Like I said, Holly was seven pounds, and I would round up to 10. That's what you would do with that number. Okay, number three, write each number in expanded form. Okay, I'm gonna start in my hundreds. I see that there's three place values. So I know I have hundreds, tens, ones. Five is representing the number 500. The eight in my 10 spot is representing what number? 80. And I have a zero in my one spot, which is not representing anything. It's just a place value holder. So my expanded form equation is 500 plus 80. Okay, now we're gonna move on to 1,056. I see my largest one is gonna be in my thousands. I can look at my comma and know, have that reference that it's in my thousands. So that one, that digit one, is representing the value of 1,000. I have a zero in the hundred spot which means I do not need to write a number. That's just a place value holder. I have a five in the 10 spot, which represents what value? 50. And I have a six in the one spot, which represents what value? Six. So my expanded form equation would be 1000 plus 50 plus six. Okay, number four, find the products. Remember, products is a fancy word for an answer of a multiplication equation. So here, I'm gonna underline my zeros because I know that I bring those up, that I'll write that number I'm multiplying and then I'll add the zeros. So the number I'm multiplying is 13. I'm gonna just write that right here. And then how many zeros am I going to add to it? I'm gonna add three zeros. And I'm gonna put a comma here. So 13 times 1,000 would be 13,000. Now I have 40 times 100. Now don't get confused. This main number we're working with has a zero. I'm gonna write that number and then still add the zeros, okay? So here is my first number. It does end in a zero. I still need to add two zeros to that. I'm gonna add those zeros here. Go over three, put that comma after three place values. So 40 times 100 is 4,000. Okay, here's my number I'm multiplying by. I'm gonna write that here first, eight, and then how many zeros am I going to put at the end? Three. Move over three place values, that equals 8,000. Eight times 1,000 equals 8,000. And then I have my seven. I'm gonna write it here. Add how many zeros to it? Two. And so seven times 100 equals what? 700. Okay, number five. These are pies. How much pie is left and how much pie was eaten? Okay, so you'll see these are empty pans. Wherever it's white, it's empty. There's no pie left, right? We can see what's left over actually looks like pie. So, 
What I want to do here is I want to figure out, I can see my holes, my hole numbers, okay? I have one hole here, one hole here, and then what would be my fractional value here? Because it's wanting to know, oh my, Mrs. Kugel jumped ahead too high, too fast. I didn't look closely enough. Look at this. I have to slow down a moment. How much pi is left? I'm answering the second question. I'm not answering the first question. My bad. Okay. I need to look at the pi that's left. Ooh, I'm so happy I self-checked. I, I make mistakes too. Proof I'm trying, right? Okay, so I see one whole pie here, making me hungry. And then I did divide this into equal parts. And how many equal parts was originally here? Four. So this is out of four. And how many out of four is left as pie? One piece is still pie. So how much pie is left? I have one whole and a fractional amount of one fourth. So I have one and a fourth left. How much pie was eaten? And that's gonna be the white spaces. Oh, so happy I checked that. So I have two holes and then my fractional value, once again, is gonna be out of four, but how many empty pieces do I have? How many pieces are gone? That's three fourths. So what got eaten was two holes and three fourths. So two and three fourths. Okay, find the answers and check subtraction by adding. I'm gonna make a fun little cloud there because it's so important. Okay, so let's subtract. Oh, cannot take eight away from two. So I'm going to borrow here. I'm going to borrow from the 9, make it an 8. The 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 8 is 4. Okay, 8 minus 1 is 7. And 6 minus 3 is 3. All right, I'm going to use a different color to break up this adding piece. Remember, I add these numbers, and this answer will be the, or should be the same. What does it mean if it's not? It means this answer is incorrect. I need to go back and fix something. Okay? So, 8 plus 4 is 12. I put my 2, carry my 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 7 is 9. 3 plus 3 is 6. Is this number the same as our starting number? It is, so we did this correctly. Let me put that over there. Okay, now I have 400 minus 197. So I know I've got two zeros here. I can't take seven away from zero. I'm gonna hop over, borrow from my hundreds. So right away that becomes three. I have 10 tens, but I'm gonna need to borrow from that. So I have, now I have three hundreds, nine tens, and 10 ones. What is 10 minus seven? That's three. What is 9 minus 9? That's 0. What is 3 minus 1? That's 2. So I have the answer of 203. Oh, but look at that beautiful little cloud reminding me to check my answers by adding. What's 7 plus 3? 10, so put my 10, 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 0 is 10, carry my 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. All right, here's my answer. Is it the same? 
it is we did it woo, woo. virtual high five boys and girls okay oop i'm adding here okay <coughs> excuse me okay let's add these numbers together seven plus two is nine make sure those place values stay at the bottom okay four plus eight is 12, put your decimal point and carry your one. One plus six is seven. Seven plus six is 13. Bring your three down, carry your one. One plus seven is eight. Eight plus four is 12. Carry your one. One plus one is two. Two plus three is five. I have my comma here. I'm gonna make sure it comes down into my answer. Nine plus eight is 17. Carry my one. One plus three is four. Four plus two is six. Bring down my money sign. So $39,176.47 plus $28,000, sorry, $28,346.82 equals $67,523.29. Okay, so we've completed side A. If you need to go back, pause, do whatever you need to do to understand what we were doing, that's fine. If part of understanding what we're doing is reaching out to me and getting some guidance, also fine. So do what you need to do to help you be successful both on this side and side B.